One of the most quintessential street food, these samosas are loaded with a delicious ground beef filling wrapped in a crispy pastry. Check these out. Hi, you're watching Plating It at Wendy, where I share with you recipes which impress with ease. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed already, click on that subscribe button. And while you're there, if you hit on that bell icon, you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. These samosas are the perfect appetizer. The filling is so versatile, it can be adapted to the flavors you enjoy best. Now, let's get started. We're gonna start by prepping the dough to make the wrap for the samosas. For that, we're gonna go in with one and a half cup of all-purpose flour. And the best way to measure flour, if you're using a cup measurement, is to first fluff up the flour in the container and then spoon it into the measuring cup. And now either using a knife or an offset spatula, we're just going to level it off. And there we get a perfect cup. And we're going to repeat the process to measure the half cup. This way you know you're getting just the right amount of flour that you require. Now to flavor it, we're going to go in with half a teaspoon of salt. And we're going to give it a whisk so that the salt gets well distributed with the flour. So that our dough gets nice and soft, we're going to add half a tablespoon of oil. I'm just going to eyeball that. Now using our clean fingers, we're going to bring it together, rubbing it between our fingers so that we get a sand-like texture. And this is what you're looking for. To bring our dough together, we're going to start adding in water and we're going to add just a little at a time so that we get that perfect dough. So I'm going to add just a quarter cup first. I'm going to stream in a little more water. And now that we've got a shaggy dough, it's time to go in with our fingers. We're going to have to add some more water, but I'm just kneading it a little bit before I add it in. After kneading for about a minute, you'll find that you get a nice smooth dough and it's nice and soft. We're going to drizzle a little oil in the bowl and swirl the dough in it so that it does not dry. I'm going to cover the bowl with a plastic wrap and we're going to allow this to rest so that the gluten gets a chance to develop while we prepare our filling. To a heated skillet we're going to stream in two tablespoons of vegetable oil and to that we're going to toss in two cups of finely diced red onions. We're going to saute the onions and allow them to cook till they turn translucent. Then we're going to add in one cup of finely chopped tomatoes, half a tablespoon of ginger paste, one tablespoon of garlic paste, and one finely chopped green chip. We're going to saute this for a little while so the tomatoes turn soft and the ginger and garlic lose their raw flavor. And once it's all sorted, it's time to add in 500 grams of ground beef. And we're going to season it with one teaspoon of salt, one tablespoon of Kashmiri chili powder, quarter teaspoon of turmeric powder, half a teaspoon of coriander powder, and half a teaspoon cumin powder. We're gonna give it a mix and break down the ground beef as we go. Wow, this already smells so amazing. To finish it off, for a little bit of tang, we're gonna add two tablespoons of vinegar, and to balance the flavors, we're gonna add one tablespoon of sugar. We're gonna give this a mix and allow it to cook just for a little bit more so that the ground beef gets a chance to absorb all the flavors. And once your mince has cooked and is nice and moist but not dry, it's time to switch off the stove and sprinkle on some finely chopped cilantro. Let's give it a mix and take it off the heat. To seal the samosas, we're going to make a paste and for that we're going to go in with one and a half tablespoon of all-purpose flour and we're going to add in water and we're going to add it in gradually till we get the consistency that we are looking for. It should be approximately about two tablespoons of water that would be required. And 
and now this is the consistency that we're looking for. Our dough has rested, the filling is ready, it's time to roll out the dough and make the samosas. We're going to cut the dough into two portions and we're going to roll one portion at a time. So you're going to take the bit that we're going to roll and we're just going to tuck in all the ends and bring it to the center. Then we're going to give it a pinch and a twist. And once we have a nice round ball, so we're just going to roll it. I'm using a silicone mat so I don't need to dust it with any all-purpose flour. But if you're using any surface that it's likely to stick on, then you would want to dust some all-purpose flour. I'm going to lift it and flip it, making sure that it's not sticking at all. So you're going to roll out your dough till you get a nice thin sheet like this. Now we're going to take this over to the stove and toast it just a little bit so that it becomes easier to handle. I'm going to place a rolled out sheet on my griddle pan because it's square but you could use any pan that you have. We're going to keep it just for a little bit. Okay it's time to take it off. And while it's still warm, we're going to give it one more roll so that we get a really thin sheet. We're first going to straighten out the side so that we can get nice strips. We're going to use a ruler to measure out the strips so that we get even strips. And I'm measuring them two and three fourths wide. And we're going to make one mark on the top, one in the center, and one at the bottom. And now using our marks as a guide, we're going to cut down into a straight strip. And there we have one strip ready. And once you have one strip cut, you can just flip it over, face side down, and cut the next strip. To form the samosa, you're going to grab the far right corner and fold it on a diagonal, and then fold it one more time to align the edge with the side. Now, we have a perfect pocket to fill. Now we're going to fill the pocket with our cooked ground beef, but feel free to use any filling that you like. And once it's filled, let's flip it over to align the edge with the side one more time. To seal it off and make sure that all the goodness stays inside the samosa, we're going to use the paste that we had made earlier. We're going to brush it on with a generous helping. And to complete the samosa, we're going to give it one last flip and cut off the excess strip. And there you go, we have a perfect samosa. Now that we have formed all the samosas, let's go over to the stove and fry them. We're going to fry the samosas in a pot of hot oil. And one of the ways that you can find out whether the oil is of the right temperature is to drop in a small scrap of the wrap. And if it floats to the top, you're ready to go. Now we're going to fry our samosas two or three at a time, depending upon the size of your pot but you don't want to overload it because you don't want the temperature of the oil to drop. Using a spider skimmer, occasionally we're going to move them around in the oil till they get well fried. And once they're ready, we're going to lift them up, drain up the excess oil and place them in a colander till we fry up the rest. From that lovely golden color, you can tell that you're going to get a lovely crunch with every bite. We're going to plate the samosas with some lemon pieces and a bowl of ketchup Ooh, see how tempting that looks dipped in the ketchup. Oh my goodness, look at that. Okay, I'm very fond of samosas and I cannot wait to give these a taste. I'm gonna go in this. I'm gonna dunk it into the ketchup. Wow. The outside is so crispy and the inside filling Super yum. I know you're going to be back for seconds. And if you want to enjoy these as much as I do, head on to my website, platingitwithwendy.com, where you will find the full written recipe. Thanks for watching. See you soon.